Hi guys, my name is Anne Greetham, and the concept my team and I have chosen to dive into today is foot washing and its theological significance. First, we're going to cover the history of foot washing in the Old Testament. It occurs very frequently in at least three general situations. Cultic settings, domestic settings for hygiene and comfort, and domestic settings devoted to hospitality. Foot washing is also associated with servitude in the Old Testament. Psalm 60 verse 8 says, Moab is my wash basin, upon Edom I toss my sandal. John Christopher Thomas says the reference to a wash pot or basin in connection with casting off the sandal clearly indicates their common use for the purpose of washing feet. It's clear from the reference that Moab is to be so reduced that he becomes a wash basin, which is carried by a slave to pour water over his master's feet. This leads Thomas to conclude that there is at least a loose connection between the washing of feet and servitude. In the Old Testament, it's common to associate foot washing with the priestly admission into the tabernacle or temple. Foot washing also prepared you for a variety of activities, like a meal, and was also used for personal hygiene and comfort. Thomas reports that foot washing was so common that the lack of adequate preparation could be expressed by the phrase, with unwashed feet. Also, foot washing was generally the responsibility of the servants. A host or hostess would offer the hospitable act, but it was usually carried out by the slaves. Those who received foot washing were almost always the social superiors of those rendering the service. Lastly, and very rarely, in cases of deep love or devotion, a host might wash the feet of another. It was primarily a sign of hospitality. One of the primary forms of foot washing was as a sign of welcome. The best documented and most frequent accounts of this are found where washing precedes a meal or banquet. As we touched on, foot washing was almost exclusively the duty of slaves or servants. Not only do they draw the water, wash the feet, and dispose of the water, it also appears that they could not refuse to render the service no matter how old he or she might be. Foot washing could be used as a synonym for slavery. Those who received foot washing from another were social superiors of those who performed the task. Moving on to the New Testament, I actually wrote an exegetical last year talking about how foot washing is also represented in Luke and John. Similar stories are also in Matthew and Mark with the anointing of Jesus' head. In Luke 7, verses 36 through 50, a sinful woman enters the house of Simon the Pharisee and anoints Jesus' feet. In verse 44, Jesus reminds his host that he was not offered water for his feet. This suggests that foot washing was a normal practice at or before a meal. Simon thought that the woman's sinful status disqualified her from washing Jesus' feet. The fact that she used her tears instead of water could show her willingness to honor Jesus, even though she has no water to wash his feet. It also points to her love in verse 47. Moving on to the early church, Tertullian is one of the first writers to acknowledge that foot washing was practiced as part of Christian worship. He said, I must recognize Christ both as he reclines on a couch and when he presents a basin for the feet of his disciples, and when he pours water into it from an ewer, and when he is girt about with a linen cloth, a garment especially sacred to Osiris. It is thus, in general, I reply upon the point, admitting indeed that we use along with, the, with others these articles, but challenging that this be judged in the light of distinction between things agreeable and things opposed to reason, because of the promiscuous employment of them is deceptive, concealing the corruption of the creature by which it has been made subject to vanity. It seems as though Tertullian here is making a reference to John 13 and the linen towel that Jesus wore as it relates to the mystery religion associated with Osiris. He does reference the continued use of basin, water, and towel, and foot washing. Foot washing was important to the community because Tertullian is willing to risk similarity with the Osiris cult in order to defend the practice. In the early medieval period, foot washing was increasingly seen merely as the supreme example of humility, and the rite was moved to Maundy Thursday, the night the Last Supper is commemorated. One of the most prevalent seems to be foot washing as an example of humility. As we said, it was typically the job of servants. Jesus lays aside his clothes for a towel, which would be reminiscent of something a slave might wear. This act of humility fits well with Jesus' command to the disciples to perform the task for one another. According to our textbook, Olson says a few Protestants, mostly from the Antibaptist tradition, add foot washing as a third ordinance. Some Protestants, most notably Lutherans and traditional Anglicans and Episcopalians, believe that the baptism and the Lord's Supper, or the Eucharist, are true means of grace in the sense that they strengthen faith and the believer's relationship with God. Several Protestant groups hold foot washing in high regard, believing baptism re represents justification once and for all, and foot washing ongoing sanctification. Some even regard the ordinance as a miniature baptism. 
The use of water and the focus on cleansing and foot washing helps many to see the connection. Most arguments for the symbol of baptism focus on the Greek word that's on the screen above this video, and the verb next to it implies the idea of a complete bath, which is similar to baptism. Thomas argues that this verb is often a synonym for baptism in the New Testament. Foot washing is also tied to the forgiveness of sin. Some scholars argue that there is cleansing slash forgiveness of sin apart from baptism that is needed and to tie this view to the removal of post-baptismal sin. Foot washing is also seen due in part to the context in John as preparation for the Eucharist. Some view foot washing as an argument against baptism and ritual purification. This is in part due to the foot washing apparently replacing baptism. Others view it as sacraments separate from baptism and the Eucharist. Often, it's seen linked dependence and the removal of post-baptismal sin. It has also been linked to the ordination rite and the preparation for disciples to serve at the Lord's table. This has been the historical review, and it's been a pleasure. Before we watch the next video from my group, the following image of Jesus washing feet illustrates one of the many examples we've talked about today. Notice an aspect we've covered in class consistently, the halos. Thank you very much.